right, welcome everyone. Good evening. My name is Jordan Bain. My guest tonight is Dr. Teresa Bullard. She is someone who I've known for many years. She's most likely known by many of you as a host of Mystery School Teaching, Mystery Teachings on Gaia TV. Um, Teresa and I met about 10 years ago now, and she's been one of my primary teachers and Kabbalah mentors here when I've been training in Boston. And it's really an honor to have her on the show. She's been doing this work for now the past 20 years with the Mystery School lineage and is one of the more senior international instructors with the Mystery School. She's a PhD physicist. Um, again, she hosts Mysteries Teachings on Gaia TV, and she's an international spiritual teacher with the Modern Mystery School lineage. She merges science, ancient wisdom, and powerful time-tested techniques for harnessing consciousness. Dr. Bullard brings a truly fresh and powerfully altering approach. We're gonna dive in, and I'd love before we dive in, Teresa, just for you to say hi, and if there's anything else you'd like to say before we get started here. Yeah, well, thank you. And it's a pleasure to be joining you on your podcast. I know we've been uh, planning it for a while, so I'm excited to see where the conversation goes. Me too, likewise. So when we, when we first talked about this, um, doing this podcast, you know, I had originally requested that you come on and we talk a little bit about alchemy. And then we were chatting earlier this evening, and I'm really wanting to bring through more information about how that's really relevant to the times that we're living in right now. Um, because there's so much happening energetically on the planet and with COVID and 2020 and the challenges in people's lives. Um, and I know that you're always about applying things practically and taking this ancient wisdom and putting it into a usable form that people can really access right away and make changes in their lives right away. So love to get started asking you something that happened yesterday on the winter solstice that people have been calling the grand conjunction or the star of Bethlehem, something that hasn't happened in 800 years now, astrologically speaking. And I'm wondering if you could start us off just giving a little bit of um, information or whatever you'd wanna share about that grand conjunction and the significance of it in this time that we're living in. Yeah, so the grand conjunction was, we're looking at astronomy world and people who are you know amateur astronomers and wanting to look at this you know conjunction of these two biggest planets uh, in our solar system or whether you're talking about it from an astrological and metaphysical perspective and what does it mean for us you know like the, each of those planets represent different archetypes and they have meaning uh, in terms of the influence that they have on our psyche uh, from those alignments that happen so I would say that um, it, it was the first time that we've had these two planets conjuncting in Aquarius and coming into such a close conjunction. So it was one of the closest conjunctions uh, of the Saturn and, and Jupiter. And so they're big influencers in our lives. Like Saturn really rules structure and old, old sort of ways of doing things. It's about responsibility. It's, you know, we can kind of compare Saturn in a way to the old way, you know, the old paradigm and um, the rigor of really needing to be responsible. But then Jupiter comes in and Jupiter is all about expansion and what is um, new and and you know jovial and it's about abundance and it's about altruism and you know in Kabbalah you have uh, Saturn on Bina which is this pillar of form and, and bringing formation to things and then you have Jupiter on Chesed which is about mercy and compassion and you know also expansion and and um, you know service and so what's unique though about this particular grand conjunction was that it happened in Aquarius so they just moved out of uh, Capricorn and they're in the very beginning degree of Aquarius early degrees of a sign is a very powerful place and then in Aquarius it's like it's conjunctions happen in Aquarius in, in, you know, who knows how long, but it's um, said by a lot of astronomers to be the beginning of the age of Aquarius. Mm. And then in, you know, February, we also have uh, many different planets aligning and joining each other in Aquarius. So we're going to have a whole host of planets coming into mm. Aquarius in February as we enter into 2021. So it is definitely a big 
a time of transition in our world. So mm -hmm. we're moving from this old paradigm, Saturnian sort of way of doing things. It's remnants of the old age and into, you know, this new paradigm way of doing things that's really innovative because Aquarius is about innovation. It's about high tech. It's about, you know, much more, much more altruism. It's, it's about how do we, you know, how do we all prosper together and, um, and yet be really pushing that edge of innovation in a way that's sustainable, in a way that's eco-conscious and, you know, all of these beautiful things that move us into a new paradigm. Uh, so, you know, the age of Aquarius is often said to be, you know, the dawning of, of a whole new era uh, where humanity starts mm -hmm. to awaken to their higher potential, to our connectedness with each other, to um, our desire to work together to help make a better life on earth, a better world. So it's a very exciting time. And for the Korean conjunction to not only be the, you know, the closest of Jupiter and Saturn and happening in Aquarius, but also it falls right on winter solstice, which is a, a gateway. It's one of the four powerful gateways through the year, which is the solstice is in the east. So just this, you know, conjoining of all of these energies. And then you had Mercury conjoining the sun right at the same time. <clears throat> you had the moon and Mars in conjunction. So there's all kinds of energy just really making yesterday a very potent day. So we're entering into a whole new, a whole new era. Amazing. That's really cool. And, and it's something where I think, you know, these sorts of conjunctions play out, not just in that day and that time, but really, like you said, they're ushering in something new. They're, they're a doorway to a new world that begins something. And we're going to continue to see these things unfold as we go forward. Yeah. So something. Yeah. Yeah, some astronomers are saying, astrologers are saying it's a 20 year cycle wow. that when, you know, we've, they've conjuncted and it's just starting a process that over the next 20 years will unfold. So yeah, we, we have a lot to look forward to in the next 20 years. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So how, you know, talking about alchemy in context of this, what, what can we do with these times that are obviously very significant that have been foretold for thousands of years in different prophecies. Um, what can we do to keep, because times of great change are tumultuous and they're difficult and there's always challenges and tests that come along the way. How can people harness um, and get the most out of these times? Like what are the ways we can keep our vibration elevated and, and high during this, this sort of transformation? <clears throat> yeah, so as he said, the transformational process is not easy. It can be very um, tumultuous. And we look out in the world today and, and we see a lot of uh, stormy seas. We see a lot of chaos. We see people having a very difficult time, you know, a lot of depression, uh, a lot of anger coming out, uh, you know, this sort of um, despair, uh, you know, so there's all kinds of fear, you know, there's all kinds of things that are spilling out right now because of um, the transformational process that we're going through. We're being asked to let go of the old and the old way of life and embrace a new way of life. But there's a lot of uncertainty as to what will that new way of life look like. And so for us in the alchemical process, it's very much about um, recognizing number one, that there is a purification that's trying to happen, that we are needing to let go of some old ways that create imbalances within us, that distort our energy, that um, drag us down to lower vibrations and we need to purify them out. We need to let some of those ways of life go um, or ways of being or attitudes. You know, there's a lot of uh, just shifting away from old paradigm. And then in what we're moving towards is, is trying to move us towards a higher way of life. And, you know, often the unfortunate thing with humanity is that we often need you know, this, these big events to catalyze our growth, right? And, and we need things that shake us up in our foundation, that shake us out of our complacency or our comfort zone and, and force that change upon us because we tend to resist change uh, or we tend to fear the unknown. And so 
if we want to work with it and, and harness this time, because there's a lot of possibility that comes up when the alchemical sort of fires and of transformation are flowing, there's a lot of possibility of what we can make out of that. Uh, but in order to harness it, we need to be consciously working with it rather than resisting or fearing that change mm -hmm. process. So this is why I love alchemy is because it helps us have a, a bit of a map or a way of navigating our way through times of change, whether they're personal changes, global changes, social changes, you know, or the actual uh, you know, practical applications of alchemy in, you know, creating medicines or something like that. It's all about taking some change, but making it better in the end, right? So from wherever you start, we're trying to improve the quality, uh, the purity, the integrity of that thing. And so alchemy, that transformational process isn't just about change, because sometimes change can be for better or for worse. Alchemy transformation is about improvement. It's about progression and accelerating that process of progressing towards really achieving a much higher um, embodiment of our full potential uh, and the, the gold that is within us. It's like trying to draw that out so that we can uh, really be much more empowered and much more in uh, that alignment with our greater potential. So for people to make the most of it, I would say they need to, one, accept that change is happening. Uh, two, really learn to work with it rather than against it. Um, and, you know, one of the things that when there's so much uncertainty in front of you, from a quantum physics perspective, to me, what that means is that there's infinite possibilities in front of you, right? So rather than, you know, the unknown and fearing it and going, well, I don't know where this leads, um, and therefore I'm afraid to let go of what was familiar and comfortable, we have to look at the unknown as this window of opportunity that gives us so many possibilities um, that you know, are before us. And then it's a question of what do we want to create? Mm -hmm. How do we wanna apply our will, right? How are we going to make things happen amongst all those possibilities because it is by our will that we create? It is, you know, if we can get aligned in our intentions, and really clear about those things, then we can move forward to make those things happen, um, both magically and practically. You know, we can we can really help push things in a in a new direction. We yeah. need to also get our vision set on where do we want to go, what do we want to create, and 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 what kind of world do we want to be living in, and then what can we start doing now to create that. Mm -hmm. um, there's all kinds of things I could say in terms of practical daily applications of alchemy, which is, you know, really thing that is, you know, going to help raise your vibration, whether that, but in a pure way. Right? Listening to music that really lifts you up. Uh, and music might be fun, but the lyrics actually drag us down or they put pollution into our mind. Um, but music that lifts us up. And, and I don't know. I, is the internet going through okay or is it getting uh, a little spotty here and there it, but it, it sort of lags with your voice and then it catches up most of the time okay. all right sorry about that okay. <laughs> hopefully we can get through this without missing too much we're not missing too um much. <clears throat> so, okay good good uh so with with alchemy you know in our daily lives it's like what can you do in a in easy ways that raises your vibration, but in a pure way, right? Bringing in pure tone, pure energy, pure vibration um, through the senses, right? So music that really lifts your soul and helps you feel alive, right? Rather than dragging you down or being an outlet to express your emotion, choose music that really lifts you up and helps you feel good and alive and joyful. Um, or really in tune with, you know, more of a spiritual type of level of being. Uh, aromas, you know, you could use essential oils and things that can support your, uh, again, just feeling awake, alive, uh, excited, you know, instead of grabbing for the coffee, you know, get some peppermint oil and just inhale that peppermint oil and it'll really, 
give you that, you know, a zing and it'll raise your vibration, just as one example. Um, having things around you that make you feel good, you know, in your environment, uh, wearing more wool, wearing clothing that really feels good to wear. And, you know, in terms of how you feel about yourself, but also how the, the fabric feels. Um, you know, eating healthy food, but in a way that really just like, you know, you, you enjoy every morsel of it, every bite of it is, is a uplifting experience. So there's ways that we can bring out into our daily life that raises our vibration and helps us stay feeling alive, right? Because when people are getting into attachment to the past, it's like it, all of those things are dragging their vibration down to a lower level. And what we need to do is, is really take an active role of being the alchemist. As we participate with that alchemy, we help to speed it up rather than when you resist it, we kind of slow it down or we fight the process. So it's all about learning to work with the process versus against it. And that really brings us back to consciousness as well, in terms of being able to focus our intent, being able to be present with something changes its nature, at least in how we experience it. And then that has a lot of ripples that go out to others as well. So for sure, for sure. what, what role, well, let me ask that later. How did you, because I'd love to hear this. I think the story is sometimes the most relatable um, and in some ways uplifting, like stories heal. So I'd love to hear you share a little bit about your story of, you know, you're a scientist, you got a PhD in physics and what was the most significant thing in your life or as a scientist um, that helped you to open your eyes, helped you to open your mind to the world of spirituality and that eventually brought you to the mystery school tradition that you now are, you know, one of the senior international instructors in. like how, you know, without, we were talking before and you're like, well, I could go on for a long time because it's such a big story. Um, but what, what's the most significant thing there in that change? What, what changed for you? Yeah. So on one hand, I was always open to spirituality because of my upbringing. Like I just had a lot of opportunity to, to, one, be encouraged to have an open mind, and two, to explore. So I had that already, like the door was always open. But I got very deep into science and physics and left brain way of thinking and, you know, analytical and skeptical even. And, um, and what really shifted things for me was during my first year of my PhD studies, I went from previously having a lot of balance and diversity in life and a lot of different activities and creative hobbies and so forth to then having only 80 hours of physics a week. So all left brain. And um, after a year of that, I found myself really out of balance. I, I felt depressed. I was not happy. I was very dissatisfied with what graduate school was all about. Um, it lacked a sense of purpose. I, I wasn't really sure where I was going with it. And, uh, and so I knew something was really wrong because I had had the balance before and then suddenly it was gone. Mm. And then I really systematically, I was like, all right, something's got to give here because I'm not sure I'm going to make it through this process of graduate school mm. and PhD and all of that if I don't find some balance again. And, um, and it really wasn't worth that uh, expense of my sense of well-being and happiness mm. to me at the point. So I thought, okay, before I give up on it, I got to figure out what's the key because I had it before. Now it's missing. What do I need to bring back into my life to restore balance? And so I very systematically brought all these different aspects of life back in. I brought in creative hobbies. I brought in social time. I had a good relationship. Um, I had, you know, more outlets and, and so forth. And, and I got back into athletics and exercising. And, you know, so I brought all these different elements of life that people say, this is what creates a well-rounded lifestyle. This is what gives you balance. And I, I brought all that back in. And a year, another year later, I was feeling better, but there was still something really key that was missing. And, and that, that thing that was missing 
is at the heart of my sense of joy and purpose and meaning in life. And one day I was at the gym and I was thinking about it in the back of my head. And it then just this little light bulb turned on, this little voice kind of came into my mind. And as I was doing my, my uh, sit-ups or whatever, it said, there's one thing you still haven't brought back in. And that one thing was spirituality. So I was kind of shocked by that point, but it was the only thing I had to go off of. So it's like, well, well I got to give it a try, you know? And, um, and so I thought, okay, well, anything I'm going to believe spiritually at this point with as much as I've gone into my physics education, it cannot negate what I know to be true scientifically. So <clears throat> I had to find intersections between science and spirituality, science and consciousness. So I started to really dive into that genre um, and it did, it really lit me up. I got super excited about what I was reading. It reminded me of why I went into science and physics in the first place. Um, it, it brought that sense of meaning and purpose back uh, to why I was pursuing the PhD and what I might be able to do. It really set me on a new course uh, in my life towards really trying to bridge the science and spirituality, not just at a theoretical level, but also in a practical level that really applies to our lives and makes our lives better. Yeah. And then that search is what drove me to the mystery school because I needed to find a place where I could bring the scientific way of thinking and the metaphysical way of you know, exploring um, our deeper meaning and potential and bring them together in a way that was really practical, really applied, uh, very grounded, and that you know, just the two synergized together. And I really found that through um, Kabbalah, and through the hermetic teachings and the, the mystery school, it was just like when I when I found my way into the mystery school, which synchronicity is really what led me because I put out that call, like help me find my you know spiritual path or my tribe, you know the people that I'm going to really really relate to and be able to talk and explore these kinds of deeper concepts with, like help me find that, you know, I was so frustrated at that point because I was exploring all the new age stuff. I tried various, you know. And nothing was really grabbing me and it was like it would be good for a while and then I'd hit this wall uh, or this plateau like that's as far as that's taking me and then I go on to the next thing and I was just always kind of skirting from one thing to the next <clears throat> not really um, feeling satisfied with the deeper answers and then I found when I found my way synchronistically to the mystery school uh, just really by word of mouth um, the answers were starting to come finally. Once I got initiated, uh, at first I got life activated. And then that started this process of, of just this unfolding of events in my life or just a little clarity, <clears throat> intuition, self-awareness, um, re recognition of choices I was making in my life, what was serving me, what wasn't serving me, mm -hmm. uh, the intuitive ideas of what to do differently. And in the course of just a few months after my life activated, had made a lot of little incremental changes in my life that added mm. up to a really big shift in quality of my life. And mm. for the first time, you know, four months down the line, for the first time in my life, I was able to say, oh, this is my purpose in life. This is what I'm here to do. Now I have a sense of direction. Um, so it really helped me get into some clarity, not necessarily of how I was going to do it, but what it was. And then from there, I just really felt compelled to, I need, you know, what's the next step? Like, I know there's more, so let me take that next step. And so then I went and got initiated. And when I received initiation, it was like the doors open and the answers that I've been seeking for so much of my life were starting to be revealed finally. I wasn't vocalizing the questions, but I'd had those questions for a long time. And then all of a sudden, here's the answer. Now that you're being initiated, you know, you're ready for these answers. And, um, mm. and they resonated, they made sense, challenged me, but there was enough there that I thought, oh, th th this is new. This is some bird, this is different from what I've found, but it intuitively is kind of matching what I had sensed. And, mm. and yet other parts were challenging belief systems, but the tools that they gave us, um, the practices that they gave us, like I really started to feel and notice the benefits that it was giving me to bring a greater sense of um, flow through my day, a greater sense of um, empowerment. And, and, you know, I mean, it was just, it, was, it just aligned really well. Mm -hmm. And yet I was challenged. 
years on um, my first three years on the mystery school path I was still questioning teachings and questioning like mm, is this you know is this really for me or is this really legit you know because my skeptical mind would keep coming in but at, I, I would keep taking those steps the results and it, it really transformed my life everything I did with the mystery school propelled that next level of growth and so after a while it was like all right the fruits are showing themselves and I've never had these kinds of sustainable ongoing fruits from other practices and traditions I had explored so I'm going to stick with this like this has got what I'm looking for and and why do I need to really look anywhere else because it's got it all here under one roof and and it just yeah it, and then I got the privilege of being able to share those with others and teach some of those tools and, and teachings to other people. And I, I actually discovered my joy and sense of fulfillment through that work, um, that that is what led me ultimately to, to stepping off of the research um, path of physics and into how do we really bring these tools to the world? Because this is where real transformation happens. This is where we really can make an impact in people's lives. Uh, much more than all the basic science that I was researching prior. So yeah, it was, it's been an yeah. amazing journey. It is, and it's it's so, I mean, <clears throat> that age of Aquarius is really a, a blending, right? Of spiritual principles, science, higher consciousness, you know, sharing, teaching, service, all these things are related to this time that we're coming into. So it's a, it's a really cool synergy between these topics exactly yeah so i'd love to hear bring it back a little bit more yeah to i think i was born for this time <laughs> i think you are <laughs> um bring it back to alchemy <laughs> how does alchemy and transformation i mean it's everywhere right i mean i we both teach in this lineage and and uh, we both teach kabbalah and you're one of the lead alchemy teachers for the school as well and you know, I've talked on this podcast, I just had, um, you know, one of our dear friends and colleagues and um, one of my mentors as well, Verla Wade, a couple of weeks ago on the podcast, specifically talking about Kabbalah and wanted to bring you on and have you specifically talk a little bit about alchemy um, and just what are the processes of alchemy and what role does that play within our mystery school lineage? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I would say alchemy is really at the center core of everything we do in the mystery school lineage, because everything we do is about creating that transformation within us, not just physically, but at a soul level, at a deep level within our spiritual blueprints, we are, mm -hmm. uh, we are catalyzing transformation. So whether somebody's receiving a life activation or an initiation, multiple steps of initiation, a healing session, multiple is that going process of our spiritual transformation, personal evolution, and so forth. So everything we do is alchemy, right? About um, intentionally accelerating our evolution uh, towards our greater potential. And we can take that alchemy and those, there are seven steps of it. Um, and we can take those seven steps and we can apply them at a very practical herbal alchemy level or you know the kinds of stuff that people used to hear about with like creating the elixir of life, right? So you can, you can do that, right? Where there's the very grounded application that really was where science originally came from was out of the tradition of alchemy. But you can also take that alchemy and you can apply it to the transformation of one's own being, you know, our soul, our psyche, our who we are, and um, and 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 all of that uh, transformation that we go through in life, and especially when you step onto a spiritual path of progression, you're all alchemy because alchemy is a universal pattern. It's a universal flow of how things transform, grow, and evolve. And when we understand alchemy, we can step actively into participating with it. And when we participate with it, we can speed it up. So alchemy is the practice of how do we speed up the evolution of nature? You know, if we left it to nature, it would take billions of years potentially for that evolution to happen. But when we step in as creative beings, we can accelerate that process and make it happen within, you know, much shorter spans of time. And, um, 
you know, the, the old, when people often hear about alchemy, they think first thing that comes to mind usually is, oh, turning lead into gold. And, you know, it's kind of a pseudoscience and, you know, it's this thing that they did in the middle ages, but we now know that that wasn't real or possible. That's usually the stereotype in people's minds, right? Is, is this lead into gold thing. But alchemy is more of a metaphorical language. Like in, in the Western alchemical tradition, they had to kind of hide what they were doing. They had to obscure what they were doing because it wasn't condoned by the church, for example. Um, and, or they didn't want people, to, other, other people to kind of discover their secrets because it could, you know, it's powerful and it could fall into the wrong hands. And so they'd always code it in this language of metaphor. And you had to know things like Kabbalah to decipher those metaphors, but also you had to be initiated into the alchemical tradition to have the oral teachings on how to, how to know what does that symbol mean? What does this symbol mean? And then there is a reflection in the physical processes, but as much as there is in the soul. And so alchemy first and foremost is about the transformation of us, uh, the lead of our being, the, the dross, the impurities, the attachments, the negativity, and transforming that into gold, you know, the, the purity, the gifts, the highest potential that we have within us to, you know, come to be like, almost like superhuman. Um, and so it, you can't even perform the practical alchemy, you know, at the applied levels of Her herbal medicines or working with metals and minerals, you can't even successfully do those if you haven't done the inner alchemy first. Mm -hmm. uh, so alchemy goes hand in hand as the inner, so the outer, as the outer, so the inner, as above, so below. So we're working with this whole idea of correspondence that we are entangled with the universe, we're entangled with our world. Um, it's a very kind of quantum physics kind of perspective back in, you know, couple thousand years ago. I mean, alchemy has been on the planet for a very long time. Um, <clears throat> so everything we do in the mystery school is ultimately about that spiritual alchemy process is how do we transform ourselves? How do we accelerate that transformational process? What are the tools that work to catalyze that next level of growth? Um, and yet also understanding that there is a, there is seven stages that we go through in, and then we go cycles within stages and we have to get a race uh, just like a chemist when they start mixing chemicals together they're going to need to keep that catalytic process moving forward at a particular pace everything is really precise and timed um, so with the you know with this informational journey we have to keep things forward and that's why there's a path within the mystery school the path of you know first step initiation second step third step the path is what keeps people moving forward at the proper kind of flow and pace and catalyzing that next stage when they're ready and so forth um, so so alchemy is really at the center of everything we do no matter what the topic of the course may be um, it is ultimately going to link back to alchemy in some way. <clears throat> yeah. And I know you had a second part to that question, but I don't remember what, what that was. <laughs> Just in terms of, um, I mean, I think you're, you're already answering you it, want to talk about like, the role that alchemy plays in the, in the lineage itself, which I think we're really already going into. Sorry, what were you just saying? Oh, if, if we wanted to talk about the stages, it's a little bit hard to get through the stages really quickly. <laughs> it is. And we've only got like 10 minutes left. So um, maybe, you know, I'd love to hear you um, say a little bit more just about what you what you see or sense or or are aware is coming in terms of like next stages of human <laughs> growth and evolution, like what you see both as a uh, you know, a thought leader in terms of the work that you do and uh, as a international instructor, Kabbalah and alchemy instructor, like what do you see coming for humanity in the next period of time? I mean, not necessarily like the full picture because none of us really know and it's way too much for seven to 10 minutes of conversation, but just to help people like, you know, because we're talking about navigating using tools like alchemy, considering the path of initiation um, life activation, Kabbalah, all these things. 
what's what's coming toward us right now like what are what are the next stages as you see it without having any need to like have this be the truth but just your perspective Mm -hmm. wow well there's you know we are at an unprecedented time on um the processing of human history and evolution and we we are faced and this is not even just talking from a metaphysical perspective this is talking from a science perspective we're faced with more tipping points in our world right now socially environmentally economically population numbers resources like there's so many tipping points that we're facing mm-hmm. in our world right now and any one of those tipping points would be enough to be revolutionary and, and also a crisis in the world in the past. But we have like multiple tipping points converging all at once because everything is speeding up. Everything is so much more interconnected, right? So what happens in, you know, in, in Minneapolis affects what happens, you know, in Europe and in China even. And what happens in China affects the whole world, you know? So everything is so interconnected that we cannot you know, in the past, we might have had like tipping points and crises at local levels, but everywhere else in the world was, you know, chugging on with whatever was going on in their world and it wasn't affected, but now everything's so interconnected. So number one, we have all these tipping points. We have to get with it. There's a urgency that humanity gets with it and figures out how to start being, um, directing these tipping towards a better course see that's the cool thing about a tipping point is that even just a few people turning the tides you know can make a big difference you know if you're at the if you have a ball at the top of a hill it can roll just a little bit one way or a little bit the other way and it completely changes the trajectory of where that ball ends up right so we're like that ball at the top of the hill and we've got in a way, multiple hills <laughs> all happening at once. And just a few people can nudge project a little bit and it will end up resulting in a big change, a big difference in how the world unfolds. Um, if we, so we're at, the, we're at the major crossroads right now. We either really wake up and start directing the path of humanity and how we're how we're living together on this planet and the kind of ways that we're structuring our society and our interactions with each other. And we either direct it towards a good course or we keep going down the track we've been on and we end up in self-destruction mode. Um, Mm. And so, you know, we're, we have huge opportunity here. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a really challenging time to be on the planet but um, it's also a very exciting time and there's a lot of opportunity. Um, and I feel really devoted to seeing our world become a better place. We can, you know, we do have all of the technology, all of the resources, all of the strategies um, that are needed within a new paradigm context. We have them all, they're all there in bits and pieces in the world right now. And we can change the, you know, the, the, the problems that our world faces, we can change it within five years or less. Um, we just have to make the choices to start applying those tools and resources and technologies and strategies that we have at our disposal and apply them towards, you know, let's really use this to make a better world, clinging to the old ways of doing things. And that's the point we're at in, in the world right now is, is there's this there's this a percentage of people that are really clinging to the old and to the past. And they want things to keep going the way they've been. They want the status quo, they want the comfort zone. Um, they're fighting tooth and nail to keep it or get back to it. Meanwhile, <laughs> technology is marching forward. Um, other you know, areas and, and you know, leaders, whether they're in industry or governments or whatever, you know, we're marching, everything's marching in a new direction. And, and yet there's still this issue with human consciousness, greed, um, power struggles, uh, fear of you know, somebody else having an advantage over us. You know, these, these issues in human consciousness are what cause us to you know, isolate or cling to control or you know, label somebody else as the bad guy. And those are the old paradigm that need to go. 
And so for us to really take the opportunity that's available to us right now, we have to make a shift in human consciousness. The times that we're in and the age of Aquarius is, is all about that. It's this shift, this rising up to a higher perspective, um, a more global perspective, a more interconnected perspective, more altruistic perspective of, of our role in this world and the impact we all make individually and collectively. And that shift in collective consciousness is what we need to steer this course on uh, a better track so that we can really solve the world's issues and create a better way of, of life on earth where everybody can prosper uh, rather than just the few. Um, and, and I think personally that the only way we're going to make that shift is if there's enough people spiritually waking up, uh, rising to a higher level of, of self-awareness, of higher consciousness, of it doesn't have to be like religious. It's not, it's not a religious thing. It's a, it's a personal spiritual thing. It's an awakening thing. It's a, I am more aware of myself, who I am, why I'm here, the impact I make on the world, how my choices matter, um, how I interact with other people and how that has a ripple effect. You know, all of these things matter. And when we can start taking personal responsibility, start finding the tools that will help us shift and transform from the inside, to then make the outside also shift and transform, right? As the inner, so the outer. And, and that's where I see that the mystery school really has key, key important pieces to help people at an accelerated rate to shift and transform mm -hmm. what's going on on the inside so that we can really start making that better impact on the outside and contribute to the collective shift in consciousness. Um, be part of the solution, be the change, as Gandhi said. and. Um, and do it in a way that's a quite an adventure. It's a magical adventure, <laughs> you know. There's uh, an amazing set of tools and and benefits that come into our own personal lives as as we do this. So that's my take. Amazing. So uh, yeah, absolutely. I, and I mean, obviously, we agree on this because we're choosing this as our vehicle for service in terms of what we really believe can make those changes and help people the most. So. Perfect. Well, we are right at our time here and it's been tons of fun. And I really appreciate that you took the time out of your busy schedule to come on this podcast. You're welcome. And, yeah. uh, you know, I hope that these, you know, just the conversation and the topic, you know, really helps people to ultimately have some hope that even though the world situation looks bleak at times, uh, there is always hope and, and that hope rests within us, you, you know, us taking um the initiative within our own lives to to make some changes and pursue tools that really will work and and support us through absolutely. this transformational journey absolutely i know that um that you do a forecast around this time of year as well uh, you do like a numerological <laughs> forecast as well it's coming up like next week right so yeah so i've been doing these for numerology forecasts since 2012 um and you know, it's based on Kabbalah and numerology and a bit of astrology and weaving it all together to take a look at the themes that are involved for the year ahead. Uh, so this this one that's coming up for 2021 is uh, an exciting one because it's the culmination of a 22 year cycle that we have been in. Uh, and I'm, and it coincides perfectly with the, you know, the conjunction that just happened and this dawning of the age of Aquarius. So I'm super excited about this one that's coming up. It's, you know, for those who are listening live, it's happening on uh, January 3rd at 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, and, you know, where they can also uh, catch the archives. So there's a registration process. And then, you know, for people who want to listen to past uh, forecasts, usually if they just subscribe to my newsletter at TeresaBuller.com, they'll get access to the previous year's forecast as well. Very cool. We'll put those links in the description of this when we edit it afterwards, and those will be in the YouTube archive list as well. So okay. wonderful. Cool. Yeah. I hope everyone here can tune in. Teresa is always inspirational and has amazing information to share. So if you haven't already checked out her show, Mystery Teachings on Gaia TV, um, there's so much in it. I can't, I've not even gotten through all the seasons so far because you're putting them out faster than I can watch them because my schedule is so busy. <laughs> I'm trying to catch up. Um, well, they're very dense. They're very packed. And uh, yeah, there's, you know, season one is about 
quantum physics or, or physics, you know, cosmology and how that relates to metaphysics and um, mystery teachings. Season two is about human potential and, you know, what's going on within our body from the brain to the DNA to, you know, our senses and nervous system and how that relates to metaphysical teachings on our potential. Uh, season three is more about mystery school teachings, you know, we get into uh, astral travel, crystals, dreaming, uh, Kabbalah, alchemy. And then season four is a journey through the 22 archetypes of the major arcana uh, as a tool for helping us awaken to our multidimensionality. Uh, so yeah, and I'm sure there's more seasons to come. Uh, so they can go to mysteryteachings.com to check out more on, on that. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much again. My guest tonight was Dr. Teresa Bullard. My name is Jordan Bain. We're both instructors of the Modern Mystery School. And um, thank you. It's just been awesome. I hope to have you on again sometime soon, Teresa. Thank you, Jordan. That will be a pleasure. Wonderful. Have a great night, everyone. And we'll catch you next week. Take care. <laughs>